Yo, what is up guys forever here in 2024 is supposed to be the year of releases for a lot of MMOs. Are we going to get those? We don't have the answer to that here, but I'm telling you my most anticipated MMOs of 2024. Now, in order, these are ranking from the least anticipated to the most anticipated. And this is just my order of ranking based on how what I want to play and how long I'm willing to play them till another MMO comes out. Just because some of these are going to be stop gaps for me, just so I have something to do and cover content with until the next one comes out. Because in the end, we're all waiting for one specific MMO or two specific MMOs, but we don't have the time to play every single MMO because they do take a lot of time. So Convaler was released back in 2019, but Sony took over publishing rights of it in 2022, and we didn't hear anything else about it since 2023 when they released the trailer that you're looking at right now. What we know from Convaler is that it's supposed to be an open world third person shooter featuring melee action combat, where players should be able to work together in a game world that can host up to 100 players to take down world bosses. The game is supposed to promise PvP and PvE modes, which I'm just like, that's crazy because they're promising a lot, but we haven't seen anything since. And the only reason this is on the bottom of the list is because this is something that they announced a while back and it made it seem like it was close to being able to be released. But like I said, we haven't seen any news about it, we haven't heard anything about it, nothing about a beta, nothing about any testing. We did, I did see a bunch of pictures on their Twitter um, a while back, but that's about it when it comes down to any information of people playing in, um, playing the game on PlayStation 5. So when will Convaleria actually come out? We don't know. Will it actually come out? We also don't know. Am I still hyped for it? Yes, I am. One thing I did think about was that the game was built in Unreal Engine 4 and then Unreal Engine 5 came out while it was in development so maybe they switched up to Unreal Engine 5 and we might be getting better graphics when the game does launch. Who knows what the issue might be but we'll just wait to see what happens with Convalaria. At number 7 is The First Descendant. If you don't know what The First Descendant is, it is a third person looter shooter game made by Nexon that is coming out on all platforms except mobile. Because we don't care about those guys on mobile. Due to the pandemic, I don't actually remember when the first sudden was announced. But we do know that the release window is sometime this summer. And they're coming up on their last test this actual month in May. So yes, the first sudden is gearing up for launch. And we are going to be hyped to play this game. This game is reminiscent of Warframe and Destiny if you have ever played either one of those games. Warframe in the sense of you're going to be unlocking your characters by grinding for materials and waiting probably a couple days to, um, to create your character so you can use them, level up the characters, add mods to them so you can grind and get another character, and then do the same thing all over again while doing your weapons as well the same way. In my opinion, it's not as fast-paced as Warframe, but it does have its own je ne sais quoi that everyone might like. They have tweaked this game multiple times because people had a lot of issues with things like the zip lining and the um, basic just like firing and the sounds of the firing with the game that no one wanted a lot of the stuff that they had set up. And so the developers actually listened and tweaked a lot of um, issues with what people had. So their feed, their answering their feedback was pretty on point and uh, it got a lot of the things fixed in game. After one of the tests, my biggest issue was the zip line and that was one thing they worked on very quickly and improved drastically to where it's actually usable now and it um it helps you meld the combat together a lot faster and instead of feeling as blocky as it used to i'm definitely looking forward to the launch of the first descendant because it is a game i was interested in when it first came out however it is at number seven because like i said it's just like warframe and i burned myself out on warframe a long time ago i haven't been back to warframe in a long time um, consistently, I did hop on Warframe recently just to like get it, get the new frames, and then I hopped off. But um, the first sentence is pretty much going to be the same grind style, and it's it's something that burns me out if I put too much work into it. And I know I'll do it because I obsessively grind when it comes to MMOs. Uh, so yeah, I'm not looking forward to playing First Ascendant consistently, but I will be looking forward to playing First Ascendant until something better comes out. And by better, I mean something that's in the top three of my list. But let me know if you're interested in the first sentence and if you've played Warframe or if you've played Destiny. I've never played Destiny. I was never interested in playing Destiny. I've had friends that tried to get me to play Destiny, but every time they tried to get me to play, they talked about they were going to carry me and help me get this and that. And I was just like, but what if I just want to play the game? And they're like, well, why do that when you can, you know, just get carried? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not ever going to play this game. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments if you plan on playing The First Ascendant and what console you plan on playing. I do believe they're going to have crossplay on launch and maybe cross progression. I'm not really sure about the cross progression, but I will go ahead and ask in the Discord. 
At number six is going to be Dune Awakening. Now we all know Dune has just started coming back into the limelight when it comes to the movies and people are getting hyped over, you know, the movies and the new series coming to HBO Max. And the Dune Awakening um, survival game is supposed to be dropping at some point soon. I believe they had their first test just recently. Um, I did not get into the test, so sadly I didn't get to experience that. But I'm still very hyped for the game. I don't know when it's going to be releasing. Um, they did say it should be this year because they've been working on this game for a very long time. So hopefully it does release this year. It's going to be a survival game, so it's going to be one of those games that, you know, you play like you play Ark or you play um, Rust, I guess. Um, where you're kind of just playing it for the time period with your friends and building your base and, you know, waiting for a server wipe if they do server wipes. I'm not sure what the, what the uh, model of the game is going to be once it does launch. I'm waiting for that as well. Uh, hopefully we get some more information on Dune Awakening um, as the, we get closer towards the launch of the game. But yeah, let me know if you're interested in playing Dune Awakening. This is, like I said, my number six on my list. I am hype about it because I do love the Dune universe itself. And among the big three universes, which between Star Wars, Star Trek, and Dune, Dune is number two with Star Trek being number one for me. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Star Wars is number three. Star Wars is at the bottom of my list. Sorry, not sorry. At number five is V Rising, which is releasing on June 11th. We're getting that in the very next month. That's going to be one of the games I am going to be playing just to pass time. Um, it's a mix of, I want to say, Rust and Diablo put together. Because um, generally what you're going to be doing is g getting your character leveled up. And then creating a base. And then protecting your base from other players while getting better gear, loot, and stuff like that. To just like outlive the other people on the server until the server wipe. And then the server starts over, depending on if you're playing on a wipe server if you're, or if you're playing on like, you know, just playing with friends or whatever. But generally people that play these games play these games for the server wipe. I'm not too fond of server wipes, but I do have friends that play them. And so if they are playing this game, I will definitely be playing this game with them. However, I feel like I'm more likely playing this game by myself just to create content because I do like the way the combat looks in this game. I've played it on PC because I received a free copy from MMORPG.com from a giveaway they were doing. And I enjoyed the combat I, I had so far um, on the mouse and keyboard, so I feel like on console, it might actually be a little bit better. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be planning on playing on V Rising on June 11th. And there are pre-order bonuses as well. I think one of the pre-order bonuses is for like $59.99 where you get to play five days early, which means June 6th. Coming in at number four is going to be Soul Frame. Now, Soul Frame, I'm not really sure about. Digital Extremes is a creator of Warframe. And they um, went ahead and jumped over and started creating their own MMO. They say it's supposed to be MMORPG. The combat looks like it's going to be a Souls-like game. I don't know how they're going to work MMORPG elements into this. Um, it looks like it's a a path style MMORPG where it means you won't be able to do open world style stuff. But we don't have enough information on it yet to make these assumptions, to be honest. I'm just kind of speaking on what I've seen from the gameplay um, so far and how the maps look so far. But we haven't gotten any in-depth information on what the gameplay is going to be like at the core of it. And for that reason, that's why this is staying around the middle portion of this list. Because there are three games above it that I would pr prefer to play uh, before I play this. Like I said, I'm not really sure where the game is going to be going when it comes to the MMO version of it. Or the MMO status of it. Um... But I'm excited because I want more MMOs out there for console. And this is going to be one of the ones that does come to console eventually. I very much doubt this game is going to be coming out this year in 2024. So now we've reached the top three. And coming in at number three is going to be Perfect New World. Perfect New World is saying it's going to be a boundless world MMORPG. Which means no loading screens throughout the entire world. Think about like Black Desert. Black Desert does have some loading screens, however, now uh, because they do have some maps which that you have to go through. However, this is claiming to be no loading screens at all whatsoever. It's supposed to be releasing on Steam and um, consoles, but we don't have an exact date on when. Uh, they did actually do a test recently, and from the test that I saw, I loved the combat. I absolutely loved the combat. The combat was beautiful. PvP combat was beautiful. PvE combat was beautiful. The the gameplay looked so smooth. Um, there was a little bit of lag for people that were playing, but I figured that was just ping issues. But so far from what I've seen, the game looks amazing. I'm definitely very excited for this one. And that's why this is my number three. 
However, I'm not sure if it's going to be coming out this year, so it's going to stay number three. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of Perfect New World, and if you haven't, are you now excited for it like I am? At number two is Chrono Odyssey. This game looks beautiful. This game speaks to everything I want from an MMO, except for the weird timey-wimey crap that they're trying to do where you can use um, a, a device called a Chrono Scepter or something like that to um, go back in time or forward in time to alternate or switch the, um, change the flow of your battle. I don't know what the deal is with that, but everything else in this game from the combat we've seen from the gameplay trailer, we haven't seen any actual combat trailer yet, but we've seen gameplay combat trailer. And it looks phenomenal. The game, the graphics, the monsters, everything just looks phenomenal. And I am super hyped for this game. I don't care what anybody says. They just had a um, playtest apparently recently, a closed playtest that no one knew about except for like 12 people that were in the playtest. And they weren't even able to share any information about that playtest. But because they're at that stage of where they're willing to do a closed space playtest, I want to believe this game is going to be out before the end of this year, if not the very beginning of next year. Coming in at number one, we have Throne and Liberty. Throne and Liberty is my most anticipated MMO of the year um, because it's already, it's it's pretty much already ready. We know it's already ready. They had their third technical test already. Um, that should have been the last one, I believe they said. And now we're just waiting on probably a open beta test or a closed beta test that's that allows more people to play or an open beta test that just allows everyone to try to get into the game so they can see server capacity. And then finally, a launch. Of course, this game is being published by Amazon, so don't get your hopes up when it comes to the day one or probably week one of trying to get into the game. The combat has been slightly revamped from the original Korean version, so now you can move while using skills. And yeah, we're just waiting for this game to come out. It's gonna be coming out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Should be simultaneously globally, hopefully. But right now, we're just waiting on Amazon for more information when it comes to Throne and Liberty. We don't know what's taking them so long. We know they're also working on Blue Protocol. Um, as well when it comes to another game they're supposed to be releasing and we were hoping for that to come up this year but we're not even sure when that's going to happen speaking of blue protocol blue protocol is getting the honorary mention because it should be coming to playstation when it does release globally um we don't have any more information on when it's going to be coming out we do know it just got pushed back indefinitely by uh, bandai namco and that's the only reason I didn't put it on the list, generally because I'm not sure how long this indefinite this, this indefinite pushback is going to last, if it's going to be affecting global or not. We haven't had anything besides the one um, beta test on global recently, and that was back in, I want to say, February or January. So aside from that, we don't have any more information on what's happening with the game. Whereas Stone of Liberty had three um, technical tests this year already. And also, it doesn't have any PvP in the game, so it's kind of a it's kind of a thing for me. I gotta have PvP in my MMOs. I have some way to break off from the grinding, the monotonous grinding, and uh, you know, go out and have fun and you know, battle friends, beat down some losers, and uh, you know, just break off some steam. That all being said, Blue Protocol is definitely one of my most anticipated games as well. Like I guess I just didn't make the list because of those reasons before. Um, but when it does get announced, you can definitely expect to see more um, information coming from the channel when it comes to Blue Protocol, as well as Blue Protocol is going to be one of the two games I do plan to play. Um, I do plan on playing more than one game um, as an MMO when they do release. It's just, we got to see which ones are going to fight for the top spot. Right now, it's between Perfect World, Chrono Odyssey, and Throne and Liberty in the top three spots. Um, we're going to have to wind it down to two, and then we have to pick one. But we're not going to get to do that until one of those games comes out and we get to see what the daily grind is going to be like. With all that being said, this has been my top 8 most anticipated MMORPGs coming to PlayStation in the future. Um, let me know in the comments what games you're looking forward to. Like, subscribe, and share with anyone that you know might be anticipating any games coming to PlayStation in the future, especially MMORPGs.